to appear in that place they will see Christ when you appear in that place they will see Christ when your name is mentioned in his full glory he will appear he will appear of darkness. My life is delivered. My business, my future, my marriage, my children, my wife, my husband, they are delivered from paths of darkness. I walk in abundance. I walk in sufficiency. I say no to lack. I say no to lack in the name of Jesus. This is my week. This is my week. I walk in dominion. All things are working together for my good because Jesus Christ is the Lord. You are blessed in Jesus' name. I want to speak on a topic titled Fear of God. And I want to take my test from the book of Psalm, chapter 19. Fear of God. The test is taken from the book of Psalm chapter number 19 from verse 7 to 10. Verse number 7 to 10. Let the church read together. If you don't have Bible, look at the screen. One to go. The law of the Lord is perfect, comforting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Verse 10. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much more fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honey come. May the Lord bless his word in the name of Jesus. Fear of the Lord. What is fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord in a simple definition is the word of God. The word of God. When you have respect for God, you have respect for his word. If you don't have respect for God, you cannot have respect for his word. And in fact, the only aspect of God that you can see is his written word. Because God is invisible. But is real. God is real. Praise the Lord. The word of God is the fear of God. When you fear God, you will like to do what the word of God says. Let me tell you, if you are a Christian and you are claiming grace, 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 and you don't have fear of God, your, 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 your claims are not genuine. Remember, in Genesis, God said, he repented that he created man. Why? The art of man is extremely wicked. The art of man is what? extremely wicked. He said, all our thoughts, they are full of evil. That is man for you. But the solution to wickedness of man is for man to have fear of God. Let me tell you one thing about wickedness is that when, when you want to be wicked, you think of yourself alone. That's one thing about wickedness. When somebody is wicked, when you don't, when you, somebody that has fear of God will never be wicked. That is a fact. And you will never be oppressive. Before somebody can be wicked, he must definitely lack fear of God. Let me tell you, you cannot wicked God. It's not possible. 
But your wickedness, you will manifest it to fellow man whom God created. The fellow man who is the image of God. So God wants man to live at peace with one another. That's why he said, let there be fear of God. If you don't fear God, you can never respect the rights of somebody else. You will always think of yourself. Praise the Lord. You will not respect, you will not respect the rights of somebody. Like in this church now, we are Christians. We gather together from different homes. Are you getting it now? Despite that, individual has their rights. One, your coming to church is a choice. Your staying is equally a choice. Even what you are hearing, the obedience to it is equally a choice. Because the Bible says, let him that have ear, hear what the Spirit is telling the church. And the Bible says, whosoever will. God doesn't force anybody to do anything. But he wants us to learn his fear. No, let me tell you, nobody is born with the fear of God. Nobody. There is no man that is born with fear of God. We learn it. We what? We learn it. You will intentionally learn the fear of God. You will intentionally learn the fear of God. How do you learn the fear of God? You learn it by reading the word of God and obeying it. Last Sunday now, we were talking about humility. And one of the definitions of humility gave is that you consider order. He said, in honor, prefer somebody else above you. Praise the Lord. The fear of God is what will save you from being wicked to others. When you see siblings, siblings, brother and sister, the same mother, they have something to share. Somebody wants to use age to dominate. You see, I'm the firstborn. And the room, or the, 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 there are three houses to share between seven people. You say you are the first one, you're taking the whole building, one building. You are thinking of yourself alone. One of the first of we already said, the fear of the Lord is clean. It's clean. Bible called the word of God fear of the Lord. He called it testimony of the Lord. He called it the law of the Lord. He called it the status of the Lord. Why does he call it statue? Statue don't change. Look at the American statue that has been there for years. If he stand it, remain stand it, will not bend. That's a comparison made with the word of God. You cannot be a true Christian. Are you getting it now? Unless you learn fear of God. I'm not saying you are not saved. I'm not saying that. Your process of salvation is because you believe in Jesus. But that faith is in your heart. People around you cannot really know who you are until they see the fear of God in you. And when you are selfish, selfish, what does it mean to selfish? Always think of yourself. You don't have fear of God. And it's common nowadays. You see Christian versus Christian. Somebody wants to prove him, himself right. You see pastors taking pastor to, to court. Pastors sending assassinators to fellow pastors. It's lack of fear of God. It's lack of fear of God. 
You cannot live peaceably, peaceably with your neighbors without fear of God. You can't. You can't live peaceably with your fellow worker in office without fear of God. You can't live peaceably with your wife, with your husband, without fear of God. You cannot live peaceably even with your children with fear of God. One of the things fear of God we taught you is that if I do this thing, what pain will it cause somebody else? I want to show you an example. We have several examples of fear of God in the Bible. Genesis 39 verse 9. That was where uh, this man Joseph was tempted. You know Joseph, the grace of God was really upon him and I want you to know the more the grace of God upon your life, the more your temptation. Yes. Because you will be admirable to people. And that admiration, if you are not careful, may kill you. That admiration. Let me tell you, the period I hate most in my life is when people are applauding me. Because the same set of people applaud you may condemn you tomorrow. There was a time we had a cause to have the meeting with our boss at the Shobo and informed some categories of people. So I stood up to talk and what I was saying, please, some set of people who happened to be our salary officer and they were clapping. I said, no, I'm not here to speak to gallery. I'm here to speak facts. I don't want you to applaud me. Joseph was very intelligent. The owners of the house love him. And he handed over the entire household, property, family to him. The wife now fell in love. I will not say fell in love. Fell in lust with Joseph. I want to compel Joseph to hard carnal knowledge, sexual intercourse with her. Joseph would have done it and nobody will know. But let's see what Joseph said in Genesis. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee. Look at that language. The owners of the house gave everything to Joseph but withdraw the wife. Say he has given me everything but thee. Kept back anything from me but thee. That is the wife. Because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great? He did not call it wickedness. He qualified it. Great wickedness. And sin against God. Remember, as at that time, there was no yet ten commandment. How did Joseph know it's a sin? Praise the Lord. You know, his family, Isaac, uh, uh, Abraham, God started covenant with Abraham. He extended it to Isaac, from Isaac to Jacob. Jacob happened to be the father of Joseph. Joseph had learned the worship of Jehovah from his father, Jacob. Remember, he's in a strange land now. Nobody is there. But he still believes that this is wrong. Say, how will I do this evil? This great wickedness. Remember, when he, he, if, he, if, he, if, he, if he had done it, one, Joseph did not just consider it as a sin against Potiphar's boss. He knew that it is a sin against God. So when you wicked somebody, you are sinning against God. That's the interpretation. When you, are, when you are so much oppressive, it can be your workers. It can be your subordinates. Let me tell you, in your house, you may have house help. That is not a license to wickedness. Your house help equally has rights. The same way your children has rights. Bible says, Ye father, do not make your children angry. That's what the Bible says. So don't think, hey, it's my son. It's my daughter. I can punish him the way. I was, I think one day the program we were here, I say, 
I let people know that. When you are disciplining your child, make sure he doesn't have blood though. Immediately he has blood. You have violated his rights. And it has become a crime. Ask anybody who is into security assignments. They will tell you better. The day you beat a madman, then you now know he has family. You can say you are the one that give back to that child. We have seen people, housewife, they said their house help offended them. Are you getting it now? Block iron until it's red. Put it on bomb bomb and pour pepper there. The person is in prison now. Yes, that is it. So it's an step you are paying for. He or she equally has right. Your driver has right. It is only circumstances that made the person your driver now. He can be your employer tomorrow. That's what you should think. Your workers are not your slaves. We, let me tell you, when we come here as a family, we become one in Christ. The pastor is not different from somebody who is an usher. It is only responsible that differ. The blood that redeemed the pastor is not different from the one that redeemed the usher. It's the same blood. By the blood that washes us, we are the same. Equal value. God, Jesus did not die specially for pastor. So there is no extra value to pastor. It's the same blood. When you see your fellow Christian being wicked, tell him the fear of the Lord is not in you. Stop thinking of yourself. When you speak against people, you don't know the extent that war will go in their life. Don't you know you can speak against somebody and he can go and hang himself? Can poison himself? And you know some people, they have they have double-edged sword tongue. If they speak to you, three days you will sleep it will disappear from you. The person is a murderer. James said, he that offended not in word. He said, the same is a perfect man. And that's why you have to breathe to your tongue. It's not until you use bash bows on somebody that you are wicked. You can be wicked by your utterances. Thank God for grace. But grace is never a license to do wickedness. Praise the Lord. We have siblings that are wicked to each other. Siblings. We have brought that. Thank God is the first one. God is now first one. Is the oppression of the house. Let me tell you, if you are a firstborn or secondborn, leadership is service. Forget your age. It's a calendar. It's a service. That's why I told my children, I told my firstborn, hand your firstborn, hand it. Deserve it. Don't oppress your young one by age. If you are last born in your family and you are responsible, first born will respect you. Check it. It's not a matter of age. It's a matter of responsibility. Choose to be responsible. Choose to be responsible. And you cannot be responsible unless you like to think of others. How will they benefit? When you are thinking of yourself alone, you cannot be responsible. Let me tell you, what was the position of Joseph in the family of Jacob? Last but one. It's only Benjamin, Benjamin that, is, that is senior. But what, when, 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 <laughs> when situation happened, what happened? The elder prostrated. That is the true leadership. That is the true age. It's not, the, it's not your number and family that matter. Ditto family. What 
expand the fact that you are the head of family is not oppressions. It's not a license. Somebody must lead. Are you getting it now? Somebody must what? Must lead. That's why you are husband. It does not mean your wife is a slave. If you are a pastor and you make your wife as a slave, your faith is faulty. If, you're, if you come home and everybody is looking for a place to hide, you are not that Pharaoh. You come home and people cannot be excited. My dad has come. You are not a Christian. I'm sorry. They must be excited. Ah! The idea has come. They must be happy. They must be happy that daddy has come. No, you are the head. I look at it. I look at the lifestyle of Jesus Christ. I, I, I'm impressed. If everybody we apply that principle, it will work. Jesus said, "Who among you want to be the leader? Let him be the servant." That's that's his own. In the world. Leadership, you oppress. You oppress. You show off. You force people to, to obey you. You force people to respond to you. But in the world, in the Bible, rather, it's different. Jesus said, anybody want to serve? Let him be the servant. And he sold them by washing their feet. The land of Hebrews is a place that when you walk, your leg will be so dusty. So he wash it, towel it. And he said, as I've done to you, do to others. He did not say it's a doctrine that you use it to deliver somebody, but he was teaching them the fear of God. And who was Jesus? God in himself. Washing the feet of man. God Almighty in Himself washing the feet of man. You can force people to respect you, but they, in their heart, they are disobeying you. Learn the fear of God. Another man in the Bible that I fear so much is David. Saul was pursuing him with his soldier. Saul so know that David will soon become a king and replace him. And he doesn't want that thing to leave his lineage. So the next thing is to pursue David. He pursued David, he pursued David, he get to a place they were tired and they dose off. David and his own army and his own general saw the king lying down. The soldier, the general that followed David said, ah! Opportunity. Let me spear him down. David, eh? Nobody there touched God anointment, anointed and gold on punish. He said, No, don't do it. David now cut the hem of his garment with salt as an evidence that I will have killed you, but I fear God. It's not the anointing. It is God who ordained Saul. No, God that rejected Saul at that time. David did not say, he must die through my hand. Then he pick up. Most of us, most of the time when we, are, when we choose not to fear God, we love to defend ourselves. That's one of our problems. We don't allow God to defend us. Some of us can go to any length to prove ourselves. No! Let God justify you. There are occasions you don't need to talk. I'm telling you. And God will just naturally vindicate you. I'm telling you. There are occasions. The Bible says in, 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 in Isaiah, it says, Jesus was like a lamb taken to slaughter and did not see anything. He knew what he had saying was wrong, but he never said anything. Most of the time, that's where well, Christians, some of them, they cannot do that. They, can, they just want to vindicate themselves. And the more you vindicate yourself, the more you try to prove it, the more you put yourself into trouble. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. From today, the spirit of the fear of the Lord is upon you. In the name of Jesus. The fear of the Lord is clean. It's clean. It's good. How would somebody say, hey, ha. Ha, ha. this person is either cis mine or not. And the person is married. And you are trying to have a relationship with that you say the person is married and should divorce. You are too selfish. You are extra selfish. Why can't you build your own? Yes. The person you say is now beautiful. That was not a story before. The fear of the Lord is clean. Let us imbibe the fear of the Lord. Let us, let us learn it. It's not, no, I said nobody is born with you. You learn it. You, it's an habit to cultivate. It's an habit to learn. You learn it. Human being is naturally wicked. But now that you are a Christian, learn. Praise the Lord. What did I say? Learn. Let somebody learn fear of the Lord. It is well with you. You are blessed.